Stockton Rush was confirmed today as one of the five people on board the missing sub. Don Lynch has been on that sub, and on that same trip that the five people were taking when they just disappeared, he is a Titanic historian and joins us live. Don, several of the leaders in the submarine industry had real safety concerns about the Ocean Gate sub. You were on it. What's your reaction? No, actually, I was not on it. Um, I've been to the Titanic on the Russian submersibles some years ago, and those the safety precaution was they always sent down two submersibles at the same time so that one could rescue the other if it happened, if anything happened. And the other thing was, as was earlier explained in the show, was that the center of those was a, a titanium sphere, which in theory could be released from the casing and float up on its own. So there were several ways that those could have escaped a situation potentially like this. What's your reaction to these concerns, these safety concerns that have been raised several years ago? Well, I'm I'm really um, surprised, I guess you could say, and I'm, I'm hoping um, that they aren't the cause of the prevention of, of the rescue. Um, it, it bothers me, of course, to hear that there are such concerns. And I had never thought about the fact that such open water, you know, vessels aren't really regulated. And I, I think something should change in that respect and probably will after this. Safety protocols are one thing. And former passengers on the, the sub who went down had described the safety protocols as being quite strict. But these are concerns about how the aircraft, the craft was actually designed, the submersible was designed, yes. the materials that were used. Um, given what you know and what we just heard from the CEO, Stockton Rush, briefly describing it, how did it sound to you? Did it all ring true? Well, it, it did ring true. Um, I guess, you know, if, if the submersible itself is made to high quality standards, like you said, the companies that were involved, the university, everything, you know, that shouldn't be the problem. You know, when I listen to what's going on, the fact that communication was lost within two hours of it leaving the surface, I don't believe that the submersible ever made it to the Titanic. Um, my theory is, based upon my own experience, you basically float to the bottom. You don't use power because you don't want to use it up. And when you get near the bottom, you power up in case you have to move around and get a, you know, you're not going to be dropped near the wreck because you're not going to land on it. They don't want that. And I have a feeling that there was a power failure when they went to power up as they neared the bottom of the ocean. And, but why they haven't then surfaced on their own, I don't know. And, and what would cause a power failure like that? I, I just, it must have done something electrical in some way on board. Um, there, I don't think there's any external factors. Like I said, I don't believe they had enough time to get to the wreck, so they couldn't have gotten hung up on a piece of metal or anything. There aren't really fishing nets out there. People aren't out fishing that far out in the ocean over the Titanic. I never saw any fishing nets on my dives. And so um, I think something happened with the submersible itself. That's my gut impression and that there wasn't any external factor, and I have a feeling it was electrical. But again, I can't explain, I'm just a layman, but I can't explain why it didn't return to the surface on its own, the way it was designed to. I don't know how big the Russian subs were that you went down in to see the Titanic, but this one is really small. Like, you can't stand up in it, and you can, you're sitting and sort of hunched over because the walls are curved around. I, you know, can you imagine spending four days in there? No, no, I can't. Um, the, the Russian ones, the center was a seven-foot sphere, and three people weren't incredibly comfortable. <laughs> and you couldn't have gotten five into the Russian ones. And so, no, uh, this, the amount of time, and if you're out of power and you're at the bottom, you're in complete darkness. Uh, there is no light source of any kind down there. And it just must be horrifying. It just has to be terrifying for these people. I want so much for them to be found and be safe, you know, obviously. But th what they're going through has just got to be horrific. What is the best case scenario here? We know that, you know, hours are ticking by. We know that it's incredibly important to remain calm um, because panic you know, you, you use up more oxygen and they have a very limited supply. It's supposed to run yeah. out, we think, Thursday morning. Um, what do you think is the best case scenario here, the most realistic well, best case scenario? Well, I would hope 
that it will be found at the surface soon, that it will be out there floating around, that it, they just haven't located it yet. That is the absolute best. Um, but that in the very, very soon, it would be found floating at the surface. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.